Hi guys, it's Sarah and today I have the most awesome guest. She is my sleeve sister. We got our bariatric surgeries exactly six months ago to the day on July 12th, 2023. And this is Mariah. Mariah, thank you so much for coming on and letting me interview you. You have had so much success in such a quick amount of time. And I just felt like the world needed to hear your story. Um, so if, if you could, could you just give us a little bit of background as far as um, like what your life was like before the surgery and like how you made the decision to, to go ahead and have it? Yeah. So um, I, okay. So in my earlier twenties, I was thin and be bopping around and I didn't have to think <laughs> about calories at all. I drank mm -hmm. a lot of alcohol. <laughs> And yep. my body stayed the same for years and years and years. And then when I was 26, I had my first child. Um, and after that, after I had her, um, I think I got up to maybe like 15 pounds higher than yeah. my pregnancy weight. Um, but I, I never got below that. Um, and then the weight just kept creeping back on, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, just over the years, I'd gained five more pounds, 10 more pounds, no matter what I did. I mean, I could yeah. lose two pounds and then I'd gain eight pounds back, you know? Yeah. Um, I tried to go on this like little journey of like not really caring. Um, yeah. But I think in the back of we my mind, care. you know, you kind of care. And yeah. my yeah. body was like, I, I wasn't used to my body. I kept running into things because my hips were way wider than I was uh, used to. Yeah. Uh, and then I had my second child. And it's funny too because. When I got pregnant with my second child, I was the weight I was when I gave birth to my first child. Oh, so, really? Okay. I got to being yeah. nine months pregnant when I got pregnant with my second child. Yeah. Um, and so and so that didn't help. Obviously, I didn't lose much weight after that. Um, and I went to the gym with my husband. My husband, the first time he went to college, he was in, he was oh, uh, it's okay. he went to college for kinesiology so he's really good oh, cool. in the gym and he knows all about that stuff so we would mm -hmm. go and you know I wouldn't say that we dieted but we ate really healthy and we made the swaps you know like instead of yeah. eating sour cream we used um yogurt you know what I mean like we did mm -hmm. that with the whole grains and brown rice and we've done that for years and of course yeah. for him it just slid off of him no problem yeah um, no. And for me, <laughs> It was very, very slow. And no matter what, like I could be good for three months straight. And then I'd be like, you know what? Let's get pizza tonight. And then the day after or two weeks after I would be back to normal. And I'm like, man. Yeah. It's no, no fair. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, when I, at that time, when I had my second daughter, we were living in Georgia, but we're from Houston. Mm -hmm. Um, and we had been out of Houston for about five years and we moved back. And I was able to reconnect with old friends and I was able mm -hmm. to see old sites. And, you know, we took our daughters around to look at the places we used to live or where we used to, yeah. where we met and stuff like that. Yeah. And um, I was really enjoying like the reconnection of everything. And I felt like I was home, but I still mm -hmm. felt really uncomfortable in my skin. I felt yeah. like I wasn't Mariah yet. Um, and so I started looking into options of what I could do. Um, yeah. and of course I've, I tried different things, tr different diets as well, and nothing worked. And then I was mm -hmm. scrolling on TikTok one day and I saw a girl talk about how she got a sleeve at a lower BMI. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, I'm sold. I'm going to do it. <laughs> and yeah. so I researched the place that she went to and I talked to my husband about it. And at first we were very back and forth and I was like, no, I don't need to go under the knife for nothing. And right. No, I right. can just do it. And, and then I was like, yeah. well, I've tried to do it for years and years and years and it just gets worse and worse and worse. Yeah. Yeah. So I, uh, one day I just bit the bullet and I was like, and I emailed the person who I was emailing and I was like, okay, I'm going to do it. And I got signed <laughs> up and I was like, I think from the time that I signed up, to the day of my surgery, it was like a month and a week or something. That's awesome. So not much time to back out or change your mind. You're just like, you went for it. Yeah. That's so cool. Okay. So did you, so you ended up going to the same place that this person had gone to? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. So um, did you also do other research as far as uh, other places or you just like trusted and went there? 
I trusted, and here's the thing. I'm a very, like, I research the crap out of things. Like, I won't buy a shirt until I make sure that it's the best value on the best website and it's going to come at the right time, you know? So it's very odd that I didn't do more research. Um, I think it may have been just the, you know, if I get too involved in the process, I might just chicken out. or Because this is a huge decision, you know? And I'm glad I went with OCC at the end of the day. But... I could have messed up really bad. Right. Right. Oh my gosh. So how long, how long was that girl out of her surgery? Um, you know, when, when you had talked with her? Oh no, no, no. I didn't talk to anybody. It was just a oh. girl I saw when I was scrolling. Oh through. wow. So you just really, really went off of faith. Wow. Oh my gosh. Okay. But you did good. You did good. Cause you, you found the right place. Um, you know, OCC, as, as I mentioned in the beginning, we went to the same place we met july 12th six months ago and um they are such a fantastic um center to go to yeah, um, and I'm hearing like stories about other places i'm like oh wow i really lucked out yeah Even yeah no it, of, of you know you switched last minute right um nope nope i had oh well, wait no you're right actually yeah. um I had signed up with a different facility. I forgot the name of it right now. Um, But then I just kind of didn't feel right about it. Everything, like little things were changing and my gut was kind of conflicted. And so, yeah, you're right. I did switch over to OCC and um, man, so grateful I did. Um, So tell us, tell us about uh, like after this, well, it's up to you. If you want to go into talking about your surgery day and the experience, we can go there. Um, but I'd also like to know, like, after your surgery, what kind of, like, complications did you have? What kind of struggles did you have? Yeah, so um, for me, the surgery was smooth. I was just really tired afterwards. I would get grumpy when they were like, okay, you got to walk. And I was like, no, <laughs> I just want to sleep. I always yeah. want to sleep. Um, but really, I didn't feel anything. I mean, the gas pains were... Okay, I mean, I, yeah, I've had two C sections, so it wasn't as bad as that for sure, for sure. Cool. Um, but then as far as like recovery, there were some like really hard times that I had. I remember maybe like two weeks after the surgery, I remember crying to my husband, being like, "What did I do? I'm never going to be able to eat." Mm. Um, which was really scary because we're yeah. foodies and we love trying new food and we love trying like. Yeah. You know, I I love sushi and ramen and all this stuff. And so I was really yeah. upset. So he would sit down with me and we would make lists on his phone of everything I wish I could eat. And I would just sit there and I'd be like, five guys fries. And so he would just, you know, and uh, it's so funny. sweet of him. <laughs> huh? That's so sweet that he did that with you. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, some of the issues I did have was um, I got really nauseous for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, everything, the smell of my husband's like lotion, I couldn't be around him. Um, just every, the the Mm. smell of food made me nauseous. Um, Yeah, everything was making me nauseous. Um, and then I had another side effect where I didn't have the sensation of needing to go pee. Oh yes. I remember you telling me about that. That's so bizarre, right? Or was it pretty common? Did you find out? It, yeah, there's a lot of people who, who have dealt with it. Um, okay. And I even went to a urologist because wow. um, I did some Googling and I was like, oh, it could be a brain tumor. <laughs> but, oh. <laughs> but it's, oh my gosh. Um, but yeah, I like I would go all day and then I'd be like, oh my gosh, I haven't been to the bathroom all day. And so I'd sit mm-hmm. down on the potty and I would mm-hmm. go and it would just, it would go forever. And I'm like, wow. Oh, that's so interesting. Yeah. So that was kind of crazy. Um. I think for I think that's probably it. I didn't really have I just the nausea was really bad. But then I realized it was because so I had a hard time taking my meds just uh-huh. because there were so many of them. Uh-huh. And yeah. I could only drink a sip or two at a time. And it's it was just it was hard to remember and it was hard to want to. Yeah. Um but so then I wonder I if that like, contributed to you not being able to go pee, right? Cuz you were just like struggling to get the liquid down. Well, no, because I was drinking a lot. I was you drinking were. a lot of water. And there was times where, like, I went to the movies and I got one of those big jugs of water and I drank the whole thing through the movie. And wow. I knew, my brain knew that I had to go. Like, I yeah. knew I had to go to the bathroom, but my bladder didn't feel like anything. Wow. So intriguing. Okay. Yeah. 
Um, but with the nausea, I realized I was talking to someone and I realized it was because I hadn't taken, I wasn't taking my, um, my heartburn medicine. Oh, so okay. when I started taking that again, the nausea went away. Mm, you know, thank goodness. I got to take it. <laughs> but, um, That's good to know. But then when I ran out of that, I think I had a little bit of nausea, mm -hmm. um, but not really. And I have heartburn here and there, but it's, mm -hmm. it's like after I eat and if I lay down, it's not. Okay. It's not. Okay. Whew. Well, that's, that's good. So, um, how long do you think that you dealt with those symptoms and like, have mm -hmm. they completely disappeared now or six months out? Um, yeah, I feel like my bladder isn't as responsive as it was pre-surgery. Mm -hmm. But now I can be like, oh, I need to go to the bathroom, and I don't wait all day, so that's good. Yeah. Um, good. And then the nausea, I probably dealt with that for, like, two weeks, which is a long time to be, get sick of everything, you know? Um, mm -hmm. and, and I don't deal with any nausea now at all. Oh, thank goodness. Yeah, I can only imagine being nauseous all day long or, like, having heartburn constantly. That would oh, be yeah. miserable. Yeah. Um. For the viewers uh, that don't know about the OCC, um, the type of sleeve surgery that Mariah and I have, they actually anchor down the stomach so that it doesn't start creeping up. And that's usually what he says causes um, heartburn or acid reflux. And so um, and with a lot of people that have that pre-surgery, after having the surgery, it actually um, resolves itself. So that's pretty cool. And I know that's like a number one complaint that lots of people that have sleeve um, surgeries get is that constant chronic acid reflux, which would be horrible. Um, but so, so let's talk about your success here. Um, do you mind throwing out some numbers? If you don't feel comfortable with the numbers, that's fine. Um, but maybe just give us an idea. Yeah. So when I signed up for uh, surgery. I weighed 215 pounds. Okay. When I, on surgery day, cause you know, we had to do the pre-op diet and, and lose weight. I was 202. Wow. And good. Day. I'm one. What? That's amazing. Is that your ideal weight or have you surpassed what they gave you as a goal weight or? No. So I think my goal weight is 130. Whoa. You're seven pounds away. Which is my pre-pregnancy weight before my first child, which is crazy. That is so amazing. And how tall are you? Five, five and a half. Okay. Yep. That sounds perfect. Yep. Oh my gosh. That is a incredible. Um, so, so for context, for anybody watching that's had the surgery um, or even that hasn't, um, we had it done the same day. I'm not really sure the differences, but I've lost about 56 pounds, um, but I'm I'm nowhere close to my goal weight yet. Um, but like Mariah so kindly reminded me earlier today um, to not compare ourselves because every single person is different. Every body type is different. Your metabolism is different. Um, you know, I'm glued to my chair all day long working a full-time job. Um, so everyone's lifestyle is different. Um, so don't feel bad because the thing is, when we decided to get that surgery, we crossed over to the other side and we will make it to our goal weight. Um, there's no doubt about it. Um, and Mariah is just like a rock star because she just happened to get there like with this six months. And that's so incredible. Um, so for, so I was, I was browsing some Facebook groups the other day and I couldn't believe how many people were saying, Oh, I've dropped off the wagon. I need to like get back onto it. And, you know, especially over the holidays and things like that. So, um, did you struggle during the holidays? Did you ever like, did you just lose, lose, lose the whole time? Or did you ever plateau or go backwards? So when I got back from surgery, um, the way that it really happened was I would be at a weight for like two weeks and then all of a sudden I would drop three or four pounds and then I'd be at that weight after okay. two weeks and then I'd drop three or four pounds. Um, I, like that. I wouldn't say that I struggle just because I make sure one of my, my biggest things is I make sure that I stop eating the moment I feel full. Okay. Um, because I don't want to mess around with that. I don't drink sodas. I don't drink alcohol. Um, mm -hmm. I don't not eat carbs because I'm not allowed to. I don't eat mm -hmm. carbs or I avoid carbs. 
because mm-hmm. they take up so much room in my stomach, right? So yeah. like, go out and eat sushi. I still get nigiri. I know a lot of people get sashimi, but I love the vinegar rice. Mm-hmm. Um, and so when I get nigiri, I take off like eighty percent because I want the fish more than mm-hmm. I want the rice. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And you're still getting the meal, and it still feels satisfying. Right. And I have, we got these little like four ounce ramekins where mm-hmm. that's where I serve my food. So I still eat like um, on Thanksgiving, instead of doing like a big turkey dinner, I make a turkey gumbo. Mm-hmm. Um, so I still get to have gumbo and I still get to do all these things, but in just in smaller portion. And I, I, it. Times I was trying, I was telling you that like, I don't drink sodas, but I do drink like Gatorade zeros. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. But because I don't drink soda, it's like so sweet to me and I'll even I'm like I'll hand it to my husband and I'm like taste this tell me this is not full sugar and he's like this right. is sugar down right 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 yeah. I love that um so do you drink um the Gatorade just just because you enjoy it or are you drinking it because it's important to get your electrolytes still uh the electrolytes yeah I learned early on in this process that like if something's not easy or accessible to me, then I'm not going to do it. Like the yeah. whole meds and taking the meds, I put that yeah. off because it was just so difficult. Um, and so I drink the easy like protein shakes, like the premier protein shake. Mm-hmm. It's, mm-hmm. it's accessible and I can tolerate it. Yeah. Um, I, we've tried so many different electrolyte drinks and I hate them all. They just all taste like seawater to me, you know? Okay. But yeah. to be able to drink the Gatorades, for that purpose it's not the best but at least I'm getting my electric flight I was gonna say it's obviously not affecting your outcome so <laughs> that's a win um so that's really good for me to hear because um I guess I just had it in my head that the electrolytes were just for like immediately after surgery like when it was hard to swallow water um and so ever since like a week or two after surgery I haven't taken electrolytes mm. so maybe that's a key ingredient that I should start adding back in I'm not sure, but maybe it would help. Well, and you know what? Maybe, I mean, I, I don't know, honestly, because you know what's yeah. funny actually is, you know how we're not supposed to drink water 30 minutes after we eat? Yeah. I thought we weren't supposed to drink water 30 minutes before and after. Oh, so, yeah. That's probably even better, honestly. Well, well, it was miserable because I would mm. be, I would wake up and be so thirsty and hungry and I'm like which do I choose you know because that it's going to be 30 yeah, minutes I see what you're saying but then when I found out it was only five minutes it made everything so much better so maybe yeah. I don't know if electrolytes are still supposed to be in our routine um mm-hmm. but I think I mean especially now that I've started working out and stuff yeah. I feel like it's easier to replenish with electrolytes that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. That, that seems like it would make sense. So I need to get some of those. Um, so other tips, I, I love that you said you stop immediately when you start to feel full. I do agree that, um, I mean, self-reflecting here, I, I need to, um, definitely work on that. Um, I don't think I've gotten so far, gone so far where I'm like stretching my stomach or anything, but, um, i I don't stop immediately when I get full. So that's a great trick. And then the four ounce ramekin, that's also a really good idea. So I'm going to get that too. Um, But what other, uh, can you tell us about like, what have you been eating? You did mention sushi. Um, Earlier, you mentioned all the things that you love. Do you still allow yourself to have the things that you love that your husband made a list of? Um, Yeah. So, so like when me and my husband go on a date night, um, I actually get to look at the menu and pick what we're going to eat. Um, cause we just get one entree now and I just eat off of his entree, which oh, has nice. saved us a ton of money. <laughs> so cool. Love that. Um, but for the most part, um, oh, so I love charcuterie. So I make okay. my, my own, we call it mom, mom. We used to call it something. I don't remember what we call it now. Um, <laughs> but it's my version of charcuterie or my husband's mm-hmm. version. And so I just get a plate and we just load it up with things. So like I'll do like deli meat or pepperoni mm-hmm. and string cheese and pickles and olives. And mm-hmm. I just have this whole board of stuff. And sometimes I'll okay. add, you know, hot Cheetos on there. Like just mm-hmm. like a small, not even a full serving, you know. Yeah. Um, and then I'll just munch on it. And I'll munch on it. I'll focus on the protein and I'll get that in. And once I feel full, I'll stop eating. And then when I get hungry again, I'll keep munching on it. Yeah. And um, I eat multiple of those every day. You know, I don't sit down and have like a lunch. I just have several shakuris. You just snack on that. 
Love that. Um, do you, or have you ever found the need to like weigh and measure your food or you just literally do what you said, like with the charcuterie board? Um, the only time I wouldn't say that I weigh or measure my food, but I like to have a knowledge of how much protein I'm getting in. So we still keep track of how much protein is on on my plate. So then when I finish it, I know exactly how much protein I've had. Gotcha. Gotcha. I don't don't, like, as far as like carbs or anything else, I don't weigh it or calculate calories or anything like that. I love that. I I did um, hear one time from a a bodybuilder um, that if you just get your required protein in first, then you can pretty much have anything that you want after that. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like that's basically your uh, secret to success, like what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I I also understand that like this was a tool, right? So like I can't Mm -hmm. have, I don't do like real ice cream. We have Mm -hmm. a a, a Ninja Creamy. And so we'll make real ice cream for my husband and my kids. And then I'll make like a yogurt ice cream, but Mm -hmm. I still use the real toppings. I still use um, cookie dough and chocolate chips. That's and amazing. Then, and Oreos, like, you know, to do a cookies and cream type of thing. And it's got yeah. that, like, sour bite that yogurt has, but mm-hmm. it's so good. It's so good, and then it's an extra 13 grams of protein at the end of my day. Yeah, that's amazing. Okay, so everyone else in the world probably already knows what it is, but for my sake, um, is a Ninja Creamy, is it like a, does it blend it up into like a, just a thick milkshake? Or like, how do you get a yogurt one, yogurt version? So, so a ninja, the Ninja Creamy is an ice cream maker, and so you can do like traditional ice cream with it. Okay. Um, but for yogurt, all I do is I just take like a vanilla non-fat yogurt, and I pour mm-hmm. it in a little container that the creamy comes with, and then you freeze okay. that for twenty-four hours, and then it just blends it up into ice cream. And then you okay, can- I think I've seen that on a YouTube video. Then it's like a little container, like you say, it has to be flat. Put it in the freezer, mm-hmm. and then you stick it in there, and it just like it's got different types of blends mm-hmm. that you can choose from. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And Maybe I, I need have to get tried some like protein shake ones, and they were uh-huh. the Peaky. worst thing I've ever eaten in my entire life. And I was like, oh man, we spent a lot of money on it for me to hate it. Um, yeah. But then when I just was like, wait, what about froyo? People eat frozen yogurt. All yeah, the time. that will work. And I did it, and it's yeah. amazing. And that's the only one I'll eat now. Is it icy or creamy? Creamy. It is. Okay. Yeah. Good. Um. So, and then side question. Um. Can you tolerate ice cream or are you just simply trying to avoid it? Because it's usually, well, if you make homemade though, just because you want more protein, is that basically why you're leaning towards the froyo? Yeah. And I also understand that like, so I figured out that there are some, some foods that I can eat a lot of, right? Yeah, that I, yeah. I don't have to stop. I don't ever get full. Um, yeah. And I think something thin like ice cream would be one of those. And I just feel like that would be a slippery slope to go down. And I also gotcha. don't know how I would tolerate that much sugar since I am doing sugar-free um, Gatorades and just drinking mm-hmm. water. You know, I don't know okay. how that would happen. And it's not something I would be willing to risk, you know. Love it. Yeah, that totally makes sense. And um, uh, for viewers um, that might be curious, that's kind of what I've been learning recently about my body as well. Um, if I eat real like legit real food, you know, like chicken and meat and vegetables and cheese and olives and all that stuff, I get full in an appropriate amount of eating, right? Mm -hmm. But if I, um, the other day I got some Chinese food and it it had some noodles in it, I was kind of like, yeah, I'm going to let myself have that. I got sick. I didn't Mm -hmm. even eat that much when I got sick. And so, um, it's, it's, it is actually retraining how I personally eat um, because I can feel so good when I just eat real actual food and leave the processed crap out of it. Yeah. So I think if I just really yeah, stick to that, I'll, I'll get there. Being able to have like my own version of ice cream, like I don't even want the real stuff. It's not really? you like yours better. Oh, I could have yours. I'm like, oh, as soon as you're done making your ice cream, will you make me mine? Like that's how I feel. You know what I mean? Oh, good. I can't wait to try it. Then I I might have to get myself one because yeah, I, I ice cream is my favorite treat ever. That you should a hundred percent get one for okay. sure. And it's they're really expensive, but like yeah. it's especially it's when you forget good. about it and you're sitting on the couch and you're like, oh, I can't have ice cream. <laughs> That's the best thing. Uh, yes. <laughs> um, okay. So you said you allow yourself real toppings. Um, do you get like a special cookie dough or make your own homemade version or you just get some cookie dough at the store and just put a, like, a little bit in? Yeah, I do the cookie dough at the 
store. Um, I do the one that's like you can cook it or eat it. Um, yeah. It's the same toppings that my, my husband and kids put in theirs, you know? So yeah. Okay. chips or, you know, and I don't do a ton, just something to like yeah. get excited about. You know? How do you, how do you sweeten your froyo? Or is it just, it's just literally the frozen vanilla flavored yogurt? Just literally, it's just that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So okay it, cool. I do think that it takes a little bit to get used to because it does have the, the a little bit of the sour. I like I like the tang myself. I think that yeah. would be fine. But then once it's you get used to it, it's there. I, can, I don't even remember what real ice cream tastes like. <laughs> that's incredible. Like that's saying a lot if you're not like kind of wishing that you could have the real stuff, but you just love what you are eating so much. That's yeah. huge. Yeah. Um, what about, do you think you'll ever get tired of your charcuterie boards <laughs> or like, is that literally like what you do every single day and you're happy with it? I don't think I'll get tired of it because it's not necessarily the same thing every day. Right. Okay. Um, like today we're out of lunch meat. So I took, um, I got these like frozen chicken, they're mm -hmm. breaded. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't. But they're not fried. I don't know. You know? Yeah. Chicken, yeah, yeah. They're not chicken nuggets. They're like little chicken wheels. So yeah. I had that instead of like turkey. And I got to dip. I did that in ketchup. And so that my whole plate was like 14 grams of, of uh, protein, you mm -hmm. know? But I got a little bit of everything. I got some chocolate chips and I got some pickles and I got, you know what I mean? Yes. Yes. So okay. I, think I might get tired of some elements on there. I'm tired of pepperoni. Yeah. Pepperoni was my my number one thing at first. I'm tired yeah. of pepperoni. So okay. okay. You know? No, I love that. That actually makes a lot of sense because um, I was trying to make some uh, meals like in my instant pot, and I just ended up having to eat off of them over and over and over with all these leftovers uh, because you can't eat very much, right? So you're making it over and over. And I was not real happy with that. Um, so your idea is so much better because every day you can switch it up with just a variety and less variety, probably. Whatever you're feeling. And then if you're craving chips, you can put a couple chips on there so you can have a little bite in between your protein and your pickles. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And not feel deprived. Right. I love that. Yeah. I mean, you even I said never chocolate feel chips. the need to binge or I, I don't feel the need to like eat a bunch of something else. Like, and we eat. We eat out sometimes, um, mm -hmm. or like if we go get McDonald's, I'll make both of my kids pay me with one chicken nugget, and that's mm -hmm. my meal. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's so wonderful. Cool. Well, it sounds like a just amazing decision that you made that day when you're like, I'm just going to do this. Like, yeah. life-changing. Um, you seriously look like you're in your 20s. It's amazing. Um, and the fact that you've had two kids, I mean, girl. You're looking really good. So for anybody, <laughs> anybody that maybe wants to do this, but is feeling like, like you said, and like I felt for the longest time, but I, I think I should just be able to do it on my own. Um, what would you say to them? We did do it on our own, right? Mm, I love that. I think that we got some help, right? And we needed the help because we'd been trying for years. And so yeah. we got an, an extra little push, but it wasn't easy. It yeah. wasn't like, um, it wasn't cheating. It wasn't the way out, the easy way out. Cause like, this, this is a, a process where you have to be mentally strong. Mm -hmm. Um, and you also have to make really good decisions too. Like I see yeah. that on these groups, a lot of people are, you know, they're like, Oh, I'm three weeks out. Is it okay if I have vodka? And it's like, Okay, right. That's sure. true. I haven't had a drop of alcohol either. You know, and it's yeah. like, I'm sure there's things that I had to let go of. And there's, yeah. and you know, yeah, I sat down with my husband and I cried about the things that I would never be able to eat. And yeah. now I can, now my stomach is, I'm good. I could eat things, yeah. but I'm never going to be able to go to a buffet and feel good about spending money at a buffet because I'm never, you know what I mean? But mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's scary, and I think that there's a big stigma. And I think I had the same feeling towards people who got weight loss surgery before yeah. that it was yeah. like cheating, like oh, you just get to have surgery and now you're skinny. Yeah. And I'm sure that that's what people think of me. But like, I struggled a lot. I had, I mean, even being nauseous for two weeks, or mm -hmm. you know, going to the urologist because I couldn't feel my people. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, <laughs> but there's a lot more. That you would never have to, you'd never realize that you, ha you would have to do until you have the surgery. So yeah. I think that 
it's a process and it's going to be a lifelong process that I'm going to have to stick to and exercise and make sure mm-hmm. that I'm not eating more than, you know, my body allows and, and yeah, staying sober, which is crazy. Cause I, I mean, I've been sober during my pregnancies, but I've never been sober this long, just yeah. for no reason. You know, now that you are six months out and technically we can start introducing alcohol again, do you, do you plan on being able to like have a, have a drink when you're out to dinner with your husband or no, no, no. no. And you know why? Because it's not worth it to me, you know? And I, and I read a lot about the transfer addictions and Mm -hmm. I also think that I stopped smoking so I could have the surgery. So I haven't smoked in seven months. You did? Wow. Wow. Like cold turkey, both of those things. Mm Mm-hmm. Wow, that's yeah. incredible. And so for me, I, I'm afraid that if I do start drinking, I'm going to start smoking again. And for Got it. sure. They go hand in hand. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, okay. and it's not appealing to me. There's nothing about drinking that makes me be yeah. like, oh my gosh. Right, oh right. It, it's just, I enjoy being sober. I enjoy waking up early. I enjoy spending time yeah. with my family. And yeah. alcohol doesn't have to be involved in that. Honestly, you are just radiating like health and vitality. Um, like you, you, it seems like literally in six months you are like a new person. Um, and I get what you're saying. You don't, you crossed over the line, right? You don't want to go back to that old way of life. Yeah. You are new. Me before yeah. I drank before I smoked before. And then when I yeah. had that surgery, I became a different person. I'm the type of person mm-hmm. who doesn't drink. I'm the type of person who, you know, Gets up yeah. and goes to Pilates. Yes. It's so cool. I love that. Okay, so tell the tell the audience what you told me earlier. Uh, you wake up and to start getting your protein in, first thing you do is? So the first thing I do is I drink my protein shake. So my protein shake has 30 grams of protein. And so that's mm-hmm. what I do like while I'm getting ready for the day or while I'm, like, I'm trying to wake up. I make sure that I take my protein. So that yeah. way... Before I'm out the door, I already have 30 grams of protein under my belt. Perfect. Um, and then I move over to my water and I start sucking on my water because, you know, water intake is important too. Yeah. Um, and then I go, I'll go work out or, you know, I'll do whatever I'm, I'm doing for the day. And I always have my water bottle and a Gatorade with me, just depending on how I'm feeling, you know? Nice. Um, and for breakfast, I'll do like a couple of eggs and a sausage. Mm-hmm. You know, and like the, it's crazy how quickly the protein compounds once you get yeah. 30 grams out of the way first thing, you know? There you go. Just, yeah. You have 70. I don't know how much you're supposed to have. Yeah. I think it's about the same 70 minimum, something yeah, like that. So when you get half yeah. of it done out of the way, then the, the right. rest of the day seems so less stressful because there was a time earlier on in my journey when it would be like 8 p.m. and I'm like, oh, I forgot to have my protein shake. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, I probably had like six grams of protein today. You know? <laughs> so just getting it, knocking yeah. it out at the beginning has been. It's a great way to start your morning. A hundred percent. Yeah. And then getting that workout in. So health first, you wake up every day, put your body, your health, your mind first. Then you come home and you spend time with your kiddo and um, go to the park and stuff like that. Stay active. Um, well, so now both my kids are in school during the day. Oh, okay. Um, and so I just like, I've been on a, like, a, a self healing journey, I guess. Yeah, of course. So like I do, um, I try to find things to like help me. Like I went to a, a color theory analyst. Cool. They did my colors. I'm a dark autumn, you know? I could totally see that. Yeah. Beautiful. And so, like, I just, like, I, I go get sugar waxed or, you know, like, I'm just Ooh, doing fun. like a glow up. You know what I mean? I love it. Oh, that's so great. Um, So when, so some people have their hair fall out, like, for, I, I read it's, like, at month, like, two or three up until, like, month six. Mm-hmm. Um, Did you ever experience that? A hundred percent. And I'm lucky because my hair is curly and dense, yeah. so you can't tell. But like globs, like while I'm washing my hair, just like huge chunks. Me too. And I Me actually, too. I started taking hair vitamins and doing two different types of oil on my scalp mm-hmm. before the surgery and in anticipation. Oh. Um, and I have oh. little baby like new growths. Yeah, right? it's coming back. Yeah. But you can see where I'm balding. <laughs> like, yeah. you know what yeah, I mean? I, so, I, I'm the same thing. Like, 
yeah, I don't even want to show people. Mine's super thin right now, but thankfully it's stopped. Like the, the big handfuls have stopped. So yeah. I know it's coming back now, but I didn't even know that that was something to expect. So it really freaked me out, <laughs> but it sounds like you were ahead of the game. Yeah. I, I knew that it was coming, but I, I lost my hair after both pregnancies too. Oh I'm yeah. They say that happens. Yeah. Okay. Of course. What, um, just for if someone else is dealing with it, what oils did you use on your scalp? I have them right next to me. Cool. I have the, the ordinary uh -huh. uh, multi-peptide for hair density. What? And then um, this rosemary mint scalp oil. Oh, nice. Okay. And um, the ordinary one, I didn't quite hear. Is it is it like castor oil or what is it? Um, I don't know what it is. It just says multi-peptide serum for hair density. Oh, nice. Okay. Okay. And the brand is ordinary. Okay. Yes. Cool. No, that's super helpful. Um, and then, and then what else did you say you did? Oh, you took uh, like a, a biotin or something? I took the Ollie hair vitamin. Okay, cool. Okay. But Go again, ahead. it didn't, I don't think it prevented my hair loss, but mm -hmm. I, I do notice like the new growth, but I don't think yeah. that has anything to do with my hair loss. I think it's just growing new hair and then yeah. the other hair is falling out. But yeah, I mean, yeah. And honestly, it's probably going to grow back better than ever because you're like a brand new woman and it's, your body is exuding this health. So it's probably a good thing. Like, I mean, truly, truly, it's like a, a away with the old and in with the new in yeah. every way. Well, and here's the thing, too, is I'm not... I don't care about my hair. I don't care about the loose skin. I don't care about any of the negative side effects. I yeah. feel like a brand new person. I like before I got the surgery, I had to take my vanity stool and put it in the bathroom while I brushed my teeth. Yeah. Because um, I just, I couldn't stand up and brush my teeth. Now Why? it's funny because the other day, um, I realized I don't sit at my vanity very often. And so I took the stool in there. I was like, oh, I'll put my stool in there so I could, you know, sit down while I brush my teeth. And after like a week, I was like, man, I don't even use it. I didn't even sit down one time. And I was like, I don't have to yeah. sit down and brush my teeth anymore. And so that, why, did, why did you before? Was it just because you were like tired of standing all day? Is that why? Yeah. I like, because, okay. you know, my toothbrush has to go for two minutes and... You know, gotcha. I couldn't stand in the same spot. Just the energy. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's cool. That's a really good example. Um, I had my first example of realizing, wow, I'm way healthier now. Um, when we had our first two snowfalls this winter, I was shoveling my place, but also my neighbors are elderly. So I was sho helping them shovel. Well, they weren't, they weren't outside. I was shoveling it for them. <laughs> and I did like four different neighbors and I realized, I mean, sure, I was fatigued when I was done, but I realized I wasn't even breathing hard. Oh, yeah. I wasn't huffing and puffing at all. Yeah. And yeah. Um, that I was just like, wow, like what a good decision I made. And my blood pressure is good now. And um, I can't even think of other things, but well, even the mentality, right? Like you just, I think you come across a people um with a lot more confidence mm -hmm. and um self-love self-esteem self-worth all that the energy is different now yeah 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 and it's it's it feels refreshing and it's still even when I look in the mirror I'm surprised and I'm like oh my god that's me <laughs> <laughs> yeah and 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 it's you the way that you've always known you right because right. before having that weight on it just wasn't ourselves it, yeah you know, it was like we were wearing a suit or something that we just couldn't take off. Yeah. Well, and you know what's weird too is I think both me and my husband are delusional because we look at these old photos of me and neither mm -hmm. of us remember me being that big. Isn't that and weird? It's And it's like even at that size, like I knew what the scale said, but in my head I was like even before I went to the surgery place. Yeah. I remember telling him, like, oh, I'm afraid everybody's going to wonder why I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. No, but that's, but that means that you've always had a pretty good self-esteem and self-image then. That's, that's really good. Um, I mean, to an extent, right? Or maybe you were like me and you flip-flopped back and forth. Like, there were times I felt pretty, and then there were times where I felt like I'm the biggest person in the room and, like, back and forth. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I think, and I think it's, it's for me, like, one of the reasons that I got the surgery, right, is so when I was living in Georgia, I was really, really miserable. Um, mm -hmm. 
because there wasn't a lot to do with the kids and there wasn't a lot of good food to eat and there wasn't a lot of friends. I didn't have many friends. And, and, and I kept trying to tell myself, you just have to be happy where you are. It doesn't matter where Uh you are. You have to make your own happiness. Uh And then I realized that like, if you dropped me off in the middle of the desert with nobody around and nothing to do for miles and miles and miles, I would be miserable. So sometimes it is the place. So then when I got here and I blossomed and I loved it and I was seeing all my old friends and I was doing all this thing, I was like, oh my God, I was right. It's just my environment. Yeah. And then I realized I turned it in on myself and I was like, for years I've been trying to force myself to accept this extra weight, the pain in my knees and my back, um, just the mm-hmm. feeling uncomfortable, the taking multiple naps a day. I've been trying to force myself to make myself believe that this was okay. Yeah. And I have yeah. to change I have to change my environment. I have to do a change in mm. order to be happy in my home. You know what I mean? Mm. And I love that. Right. Powerful, powerful words. So not just your external environment, but your 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 internal, your body environment. Everything has changed. Yeah. And that's a key to your success. Um what else? Um, I had, I, I guess I should have a little notepad because when you were talking earlier, I had two things come up in my mind, but then, you know, kind of went off. So is there anything else that you can think of um, for anybody that's either struggling that did have it or anybody that's thinking about having it um, that comes to mind that you, that we haven't talked about already? I would say that the best part of this whole thing has been the journey, right? has mm-hmm. been the delusion um because i know that the moment that i booked my surgery i was so confident like before i had even flown to san diego to drive to yeah. tijuana i was so confident because i knew it was coming you know what i mean yeah. like yeah. you knew the decision was a good one it felt good right. after and so it. this throughout the whole journey even I would say, so I've lost almost 80 pounds and I would say even 40 pounds ago, I was like, where's the rest of the weight going to come off of, you know? I love that. And, um, there was times where like, I, I, like, I was like, even when I just got back, like a week and a half after I got back, we went on a a double date with some of our friends and I was like, they're going to be so impressed. (laughs) You know what I mean? I love it. It was just the journey. And Yes, the stalls were hard at times, but they Mm -hmm. were only hard when I was on the scale and I was like, oh, darn, right? Mm -hmm. But then Mm -hmm. after I got off the scale and I'd go to put on my shorts that I've been wearing for the past three years and they don't fit, that feels kind of good, you know? Uh, I I think focusing on the good and what you've already done and and Mm -hmm. being okay if your body's going to be like this for a little bit longer yeah is is an important part of the process so you're not disappointed in yeah. your results you know right no thank you for that cuz yeah that's that's kind of where i'm at like stay positive i'll get there i mean some people take a year right yeah. and maybe maybe i'll be uh having my celebration next july 12th <laughs> you well, know it's, to it's, get done to me. It's, it's ain't nothing right it's, right it's, exactly it's not nothing. <laughs> And it was a, weight. That's true. And it was enough to make me feel a lot better about myself. Like yeah. I, I feel like a normal person now. I don't feel skinny yet, but I don't feel like I'm out of place anymore. 100%. I so mean, that's isn't true. that enough? Like, you know what I mean? Like, even mm-hmm. if you didn't change for enough, another six months, you are still scooping snow. You know right. what I mean? And not getting out of breath. And right. you know what I mean? And you feel normal. Yeah. How great is that feeling? You know, it feels amazing. Amazing. So yes. Uh, so yeah, anyone that's watching that, um, that has gone through the years and years of, like she said, perfectly trying to convince yourself that it's okay, trying to pretend you don't care. Um, and you know, just tr- trying to ignore the blood pressure numbers and the scale and the whatever's, um, you can stop the struggle. You can, you can just make the decision and within like when I made my decision to when I had the surgery was three weeks, hers was like a month or something really, really similar. So within that amount of time, your whole entire world can change. And, um, there is, um, a word of caution. There is, um, the possibility to go to the wrong place. So 
if you are interested in a good referral, um, definitely reach out to me or Mariah, um, and and we can tell you, you know, who we recommend. Um, we already mentioned it's called the OCC. Um, do you remember what it stands for? Obesity, <laughs> Obesity Control, Control Center. Center. Yeah. Okay. Obesity Control Center in Tijuana, Mexico. Um, actually, we should probably talk about that real quick. Um, was it scary to go to Mexico for you? No, not well. And I have. I daydream about living in Mexico. I love Mexico. I actually love. do too. It's, yeah, it's so great, and everyone's so kind. And especially during this journey, you know, yeah. um, the chauffeur is so helpful. Um, mm -hmm. You're with other people, mm -hmm. um, and you're you're you never feel like you're alone, and you don't know what to do. You know, maybe when you first yeah. land at the airport, and you're like, "Where's my ride?" But after that, yeah. it's so you're, the whole time you were taken care of. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Mariah and I actually were picked up at the airport together. We rode in the, in the, um, the shuttle or taxi or whatever back to the, um, OCC. So it was, it was a really great experience. Um, and yeah, just, uh, we've already done our research. We experienced it. We lived it. It's, it's a solid place. They have the, I think it was called the JACO accreditation and it's an international accreditation that even places here in the United States don't have that level of accreditation. So um, if you're thinking about doing it, choose wisely. We can't recommend the OCC enough. Um, and the main doctor's name is Dr. Ariel Ortiz. Yeah. Um, wow. Well, yes. I'm so... I do, yeah. I do want to say something about yes, please. Um, having negative experiences with others, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Um, so mm. when I first got the surgery, I didn't tell anybody. I told my mom and my husband, obviously. Yeah. Um, and I didn't talk to anybody about it because I was so afraid of negative feedback, right? Mm -hmm. I didn't want people to tell me I was cheating or, oh, you should just do this or, oh, but you're not big enough. I didn't want any of it. So I didn't tell right. anybody, right? Um, I posted about it on like Facebook and Instagram or Four months out, I think I had lost mm -hmm. forty pounds, um, and I did my before and after, and I got a lot of good feedback. And I mm -hmm. found out later that there were some women who were screenshotting it and sending it to other people that I know to make fun of me. Yeah, to um, make fun of you. Yeah, really? Uh huh. Whoa! And that really hurt for a couple of seconds, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um. But at the end of the day, I realized that, like, I'm so happy with my decision. Yeah. And I feel so confident. And if mm -hmm. other people think that it was a bad decision, then that's really good for them because they don't have to do it. You know? There so I you think go. if there's anybody out there struggling with what other people will think, just know that you'll yeah. get to this spot where you'll realize that it really doesn't matter what anybody thinks because yeah. of how good you feel. You know? Mm, what a wonderful way to bring that home. Um, yeah, you're so right. I did, I did get that a lot before mine. Um, when I told neighbors, as an example, what I was going to Mexico for, I got over and over, but you're not big enough. What are you, what are you doing? You know, and all this, but I already knew in my heart, like, it doesn't matter what anybody says. Like, I know this is right for me. And, um, and like you said, even if it takes you a little bit longer to come to that conclusion, it feels so right and you feel so good. Oh, yeah. No one else is living in your body. You're the one that has to live in it. So that's all that matters. <laughs> yeah. Um, one other thought is coming to my mind. What would you say if somebody was like, uh, I, I think it's extreme. Like, I want to do it, but I think it's extreme. Maybe I'm going to go try that Ozembek instead. Do you have any thoughts on that? Um, no, not really. I know that I live an extreme life. I have a, I have a face tattoo and a hand tattoo. I know <laughs> I'm extreme, and that's yeah. fine. If it's not for everybody, then it's not for everybody. Yeah, you're um, a confident girl. I think that if someone offered me Ozempic, like if they laid it out Ozempic or the surgery, knowing now what I know now, 100% I would take the surgery. Yeah. Um, and actually, Why? I... Knowing what I know now, if I had to have the surgery once a year, every year until I died, I would, I would do it. That's how much, like, that's how good I feel, you know? That's um, a great way to put it. Wow. But if, if people feel like, you know, they can do it on their own, then do it on your own. If you feel like you could do it better with Ozempic, then do it with Ozempic. But like, yeah, I think the main takeaway is that the weight loss 
really helped me as a person blossom. And it might help other people or other people may feel comfortable in their skin no matter what size it is. And it's all beautiful. You know, that's true. That's true. You're right. So, so you do you. Um, don't be ashamed of it. Don't compare yourself with others. Um, my only thought with Ozempic is I've heard there's a lot of side effects that are long term. So that would scare me. Um, whereas I'm completely in agreement with you. I've never even had that thought before. But when you said it, it was super powerful. If I had to have the surgery every single year, I would do it as well. That's how much I'm happy that I had it. Yeah. So, yeah. That's so powerful. Um, awesome. Well, I feel like we covered a lot here. Um, I'm going to try to learn how to edit the video well enough to put in some before and after pictures of our beautiful Mariah. And um, yeah, you guys are going to love to see that. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for taking the time tonight to do this for us. And um, maybe maybe in another six months, we'll have another one of these. Yeah. Or let's go on a cruise. Let's go on a weight loss cruise. That sounds amazing. Yes, that would be so fun. We'll definitely do that. And we'll be healthy. Mm -hmm. We don't we don't need to even drink alcohol to have fun. Exactly. We can just lay in the sun. <laughs> I love it. All right, girl. Well, thank you so much again for your um your awesome uh experience and sharing your wonderful story. It's, it was super inspiring. Thank you for having me.